Hi everybody, I am really, really grateful that I get to interact with you in this way while we can't be together. Now, to be really honest, this has been really hard to not see you guys every single week and to get to see your smiling faces. And it's really weird for me to try and do this on camera. It's not something I'm good at or ever thought I would be doing. So I want you to turn to whoever's in your house right now and say, this is really weird because I'm feeling like this is really weird. Now, last week when I did our lesson, I challenged you to give big with a cheerful heart. And I wanna know who did so. So you can comment below and let me know what you did. I got the opportunity to help a couple people by getting groceries for them. One of them has been at home sick and needed groceries dropped off to their doorstep. And I got a chance to interact with some people from my neighborhood. I promise I stayed six feet away from them but we interacted with each other and they got a chance to talk and they had been cooped up in their house for quite a while so it was really meaningful to them now today's story is gonna get really messy so stick with me because we are going to make a big mess of part way through let's get started jesus and his disciples were getting ready for the Passover meal. Now the Passover meal is a big celebration, kind of like Thanksgiving or Christmas for us or even Easter, where everybody got together and they celebrated and they had a big meal. Now this was because they were celebrating that God had brought them out of Egypt and in the process of bringing them out, all of the firstborn sons in Egypt died, but God passed over the Israelite houses and none of their sons died. So every year they would get together and they would celebrate what God had done. Well, this time Jesus asked them to get ready and they did. They went about, they got ready and everybody met in this room for Passover. This was gonna be the last meal that Jesus ate before he died. But his disciples didn't know that yet. Now. They're all in this big upper room and they've been running all over the city all day long getting everything ready. And I'm quite certain that their feet were disgusting. Cause see back then the roads were made out of dirt and there were lots of animals running around. And what do animals leave? Yep, you guessed it, animal droppings and poop. And it was everywhere and it got on their sandals and it got on their feet and there was trash around and the streets were dirty. And so their feet were really gross. And usually there would have been a servant at the door and the servant would have washed everybody's feet. But that didn't happen this night. And so everyone sits down to dinner with their gross, dirty feet. And Jesus gets up and he takes a towel and he puts it around his waist and he pours some water into a bowl and he gets ready to go around the table and wash the disciples' feet. Now, when I was thinking about this, I was wondering who out there might have the stinkiest, dirtiest feet. So look at your feet and decide if it's you. I looked around my house and quite frankly, you can, you can see my feet. They're just really don't compare to Jesus's disciples' dirty feet. So in an effort to make this more realistic, I've set out a bunch of gross things behind me that Mariah and I are going to run through and make our feet look disgusting. So we'll be right back with our dirty feet. <laughs> Okay, this feels really gross and it looks even worse. And quite frankly, this is nothing compared to what was happening on the disciples' feet. But Jesus chose to wash them anyway. He went around that table and he washed all that yuck off of each and every one of the disciples' feet. And you know what? Jesus, when he finished, he had something to say to the disciples. So grab your blue Bibles, or if you don't go to East Park, just grab a Bible and open to John chapter 13, verses 13 to 15. And we're going to read it together. Okay, it's way back here. It's going to be on this side of the page, on page 1304. John is in the New Testament, and it's telling about Jesus. So let's see what Jesus had to say to his disciples. He said, you call me teacher and Lord. You're right, that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. So also, sh so you also should wash one another's feet. I have given you an example. You should do as I have done for you. Jesus, the King of the universe, 
didn't think he was too important to go ahead and wash the disciples' feet. He was living by example. He was saying, you know what? I did this for you. You need to go to do it for other people. Guess what? Jesus was not saying that we have to go around washing everyone's feet, which I am eternally grateful for because I don't even want to wash my own feet right now. But he was saying that we need to take care of other people, that we need to see them as more important than ourselves and not only worry about us. Jesus said, take care of other people. So I want to challenge you this week. How can you serve somebody else? How can you take care of them? While you're stuck at home, I've got a couple of ideas for you. You could read to a younger sibling and give mom five minutes of peace because I'm pretty sure she would see that as a great amount of service. Maybe your dad just wants 10 minutes without kids arguing because you know what? We've all been stuck in the house for a week now. Try doing that for them. Maybe you're going to set the table. Maybe you'll fold a load of laundry. Maybe you will make your brother's bed for him today. Maybe you'll call up your grandparents and just have a conversation with them because they've been stuck in their house for a week and they're lonely. But I want you to think about living like Jesus did. If Jesus isn't too important to serve other people, then neither are you and neither am I. So this week, spend some time with Jesus, listen for his voice, and go and serve somebody else. Bye, EP Kids. I can't wait to do our next video. And more than that, I cannot wait to see you again.